Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, as was the vast majority of finance and crypto. And let's just dive into this image here. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the purchasing power of the US dollar. So you know, going back in time, as you do look at the overall chart of the US dollar and the value of one US dollar, it is pretty comical that we live in a world where this is our currency. One thing that's surprising is when we see these individuals talking about how volatile uh, crypto is. Go back in time. Look at the macro charts for some of these cryptocurrencies. like. Would you rather hold the US dollar for 10 years or would you rather hold crypto for 10 years? I mean, look at the valuations here in a 10 year span going all the way back to 1910 to 1920 to 1930 every 10 years. Look at the last time that we ever seen a rise in the US dollar's overall value was literally 1935. And it went from 1514 to about 1991. Ever since, it's just been a downward slope. But technically speaking, even that slight increase there in terms of value, well, look at back in time going all the way back to uh, 1910. Realistically speaking, it's only lost value. It really didn't gain much. It just was a small spike. This is exactly why fiat currencies have failed. And it started with the inception of the Fed. This is why centralized currencies, they just don't work. I've said it. We have a big issue within the economy. And it all starts with the Fed. Now, I also want to, I really want to start with this because this is, this is pretty big. So... I want to ask all of you out there, do you trust what the Federal Reserve tells you? Comment down below. I want to hear from all of you. Do you believe what the Fed is telling you? Because here we have Fed FAQ. Is Fed now replacing cash? First off, I think it's crazy that they actually had to make this, but we do see, is it a central bank digital currency? Fed now is not related to a digital currency. FedNow is a payment service the Federal Reserve is making available for banks and credit unions to transfer funds. Now, I want to go in depth on the dark secret behind the FedNow service as well. But yes, I don't believe that the FedNow service is a CBDC. A lot of people have been trying to make this argument that the FedNow is a CBDC. I think that this is actually the accelerant for CBDC, which I'll talk about here in a second. But um, this, t this talks a little bit about it a little bit, but we do see the FedNow service is neither a form of currency nor a step towards eliminating any form of payment, including cash. The FedNow service is an instant payment service provided by the Federal Reserve launching in July of this year. FedNow will be available to depository institutions such as banks and credit unions in the U.S. and will enable individuals and businesses to send instant payments through their depository institution accounts. Instant payments allow individuals and businesses to send and receive payments within seconds at any time of the day on any day of the year so that the receiver of a payment can use the funds almost instantly. The Federal Reserve has made no decision on issuing a CBDC and would not do so without clear support from Congress and executive branch, ideally in the form of a specific authorizing law. A CBDC would not replace cash or other payment options. Sure. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about this. Let's go over to this video. I, re I, I just recently told you guys to go check out Peter on Twitter as well as on his YouTube channel. This video is about four minutes long. Um, I know it's a little bit lengthy, but listen closely to this. We do see governments hungry for a CBDC. The bank crisis is the excuse. Listen closely to this. Hey guys, so it is Sunday. There is a lot going on in Switzerland. They're trying to force a bank merger of two giant banks. But the thing that I really want to talk about today is central bank digital currencies. So the bank crisis is setting the stage for them to sneak in 
a centralized CBDC, which is a government run cryptocurrency. And this could give them total control over your life, like China's totalitarian social credit system. A CBDC, sometimes they give it a cheerful name of digital dollar, is a type of cryptocurrency. It imitates Bitcoin, but this is a free cows version of Bitcoin, which is run by the government. And it means that bureaucrats will be able to see everything you spend. They will be able to control everything you spend. They can fine you at will. They can stop you from buying a gun. They could force you to eat the bugs. A CBDC can even make your money erode or even vanish. You have no control. They can centrally program this thing. They can zero in, look at you, and decide what they're going to do about your life savings. They can block you from exiting a bank that's going under. They can see and control everything you do, who you're uh, transacting with, why you're doing it. In short, a CBDC is a totalitarian's wet dream. It is total social control. It gives us a Chinese style system where you would be afraid to criticize the government. You would be afraid to go along with whatever the bureaucrats have decided you're gonna do next. Now for the past year, in Washington, they have been pushing these CBDCs nonstop. I have been fighting them. We at Heritage have been fighting them. What's amazing is they push this crap when no voters want this. Left-wing voters don't want a CBDC. Right-wing voters don't want it. When they do polls, a CBDC comes in at like 10 or 20%. If you tell Americans you're going to cancel the penny, they will throw tomatoes at you, right? This is canceling all money and replacing it with the Ministry of Surveillance, yet the bureaucracy is full court press on this. It is an all-out government push across agencies from the Fed. They're even pushing in states. They're doing these model legislation in places like South Dakota, Montana, which open the door to a CBDC while specifically excluding Bitcoin as a currency. So Christy Noam of South Dakota just vetoed one of these things to her credit. Uh, last week, I talked with the Montana LP uh, Mises Caucus about they've got a version coming up on Montana. This is probably something we're going to see across states. I have had dozens of meetings over the past year with congressional offices to fight this thing, communicating that voters don't want it. This is an existential risk, especially for regional banks, in fact, for the entire financial system. But the swamp creatures keep pushing. It's like they don't care what voters want. They don't care about the collateral damage. They've got some other goal. Now, we're already seeing this road toward a CBDC unfolding in this banking crisis. So deposits are flooding, concentrating towards the very biggest banks, which already have about half the bank deposits in America. So this is this giant sucking sound towards the giant banks. The banking crisis is the perfect opportunity for government to push this system towards a CBDC, to push people towards holding all their money in the government, as if government were one giant mega bank, this would give us essentially what the Soviet Union had, government allocation of all capital. Because after all, the government can't go bankrupt, right? It's got a giant money printer, and that money printer sucks money out of your life savings. They can't go bust. They just convert it all into inflation and take it from you. So that means that fear, a bank crisis, this is the exact moment for them to push this totalitarian social credit coin. The end result would be complete bureaucratic control over every dollar you spend, every dollar you earn. Pair that with inflation that has no end, a pipeline siphoning out your life savings to government bureaucrats. All right, I'm going to be talking a lot about this over the coming weeks. See you guys next time. So yeah, we have been nonstop reporting on this. A lot of people have been calling it doom and gloom. Well, guess what? The warning signs are already here for this. But you see over here, newsflash, FedNow is not a CBDC. This is from Caitlin Long. Biggest risk from the introduction of FedNow this uh, July is that the U.S. banking system already has too little liquidity as banks already hold far too little cash to handle the potential for 24-7, 365 withdrawals. The FedNow system, what's going to happen with this? is it's going to accelerate these banks collapsing. This is all by design. This is basically, if 
I had to describe it, their wet dream around an excuse to introduce CBDCs. This is going to cause the banking system, the traditional system, if you will, to become so unstable to the point where we will see 2008 on a much larger scale. And this is not because the Fed now is a CBDC. No, that comes after. Because again, the bank crisis is the excuse. And already, we've seen this as well. Matthew L-I-N-Y posts that money market accounts do not allow banks to lend out that deposit. No fractional reserve scheme. We do see from Wall Street Silver, trillions of dollars are draining out the banks into money market funds. That weakens the banks. Fear that the banks are at risk is driving this, that, uh, sorry, this trend and thus making the banks even weaker. Again, this is from Peter. Fed warns of silent bank run. Um, and then we do see down here, this trend will accelerate. This is from Elon Musk. Yes, I'm telling you right now, you need to wake up and smell the roses because this is on a much larger scale. We will see the system collapse. We will. All of this is by design. It's all by a major design. Now, I also want to share with you guys what Mark Phillips posted because I think that this is a very interesting way to look at things. And we do see the only rational reason for a country to not be concerned about $50 trillion worth of debt is if it doesn't intend to repay it. Default, debt jubilee, currency reset, something else? You tell me. And yes, this is the idea. Default on the debt, debt jubilee, currency reset. This is the big one here, because again, this falls in line with everything. What we will see is the FedNow service go live. From there, we will see banks start to collapse faster than any time before. The warning signs were already there in the beginning of March. Then what we will see is the governments introduce a CBDC, or at least they will try to. And what we will see from there on out will change everything. The banks are already on their last leg. I mean, this is going to be, it's going to be gasoline to the fire. That's all it is. It's going to accelerate this. And by the way, we already are starting to see states um, basically move away or at least want to move away from the dollar. We do see U.S. states are preparing for a possible Federal Reserve dollar downgrade by creating gold repositories, allowing crypto payments for state taxes and services. New Hampshire, uh, Texas, Wyoming, Florida will take the lead and make other states less competitive. Check this out. 23 U.S. states move to reclaim gold and silver as legal tender. Very interesting. Then, followed by this, Tennessee governor signs bill authorizing state gold and silver reserves. Followed by... Blockchain and digital assets, May 2022, from McKinsey and Company. Then over here, what do you see in financial services, significant value pools across the digital asset value chain and token issuance, lending, exchange, custody, and payments. Look at all of the new entrants here. Um, very interesting. You do see how incumbents are reacting. DBS, Visa, Goldman Sachs, Fidelity. Um, over here, we also have Signature. I believe this is Signature. And then Novi as well. You can see all of them and how they are utilizing this. And then up here, you do see digital asset value chain stage as well. I mean, listen, I don't need to be the ones to tell you what's really happening here. What we will see is CBDCs backed by gold issued out on private ledger technology, most likely. We already know that Ripple is ahead of the game with this. Um, a lot of what we already see around the pipeline for this, more so the plumbing, if you will, it's already there. They've been preparing. They've been building this. This is all by design. And we recently just seen Texas make a big announcement. Texas has put a bill in the House and the Senate that will create a state it uh, issued gold backed digital currency that is fully redeemable on physical gold or cash. Um, I don't know how to take this, to be honest with you guys. I want to ask all of you out there, what do you perceive this to be? Because again, this could either be good or bad because this digital currency it can mean a lot of things it could be a state issued cbdc or it could be something completely different i'm very interested to see what's going to happen here on out because we already know that the BRICS currency for example 
will be backed by gold and other commodities such as rare earth elements. We already seen this being announced. China's yuan will create a bipolar currency system and the US dollar in the global financial system. A lot of people have been uh, mentioning this, myself included. Um, a lot of the events that we recently just seen are kind of igniting this push away from the US dollar into the gold um, system, if you will. In fact, central banks in themselves, I've been reporting on this as well. They've been buying gold like crazy, especially even in February. We do see global central banks added 52 tons of gold to the reserves. This is the 11th consecutive month of net purchases. People all over the world are now paying attention. And I want to go back to what Mark Phillips said. Like we have this massive amount of debt. We see uh, countries and even states now being very bullish on gold at a time where, you know, we have the Fed now service going live in July. We already seen banks starting to kind of collapse. The, the banking sector is extremely weak right now. Like, what do you think happens next? Like everything is building up for this huge event that I believe will be the currency reset. I think that this is going to be a great moment in time to really be ahead of the curve because a lot of individuals out there are going to be taken by storm by this. They're going to be caught off guard. A lot of people are not prepared for what's about to happen. I've, I've talked to so many people. I mean, like even AI technology, like I talked to them about how AI technology is taking over and they're like, no, we have until 2025, 2020, you know, or 2030, 2035. Like it's crazy to me how, how some people are just so like they're so outside of the norm of what's happening. And again, I don't blame them because that's what we have done. Our government has created this entire world. It's almost like a fairy tale land, if you will, that's distracting people on a 24 seven basis. They keep the media machine running. Outside of what's happening within the media machine is real life. And this is real life. We are seeing a major shift around currency. And I want to share with you guys this. I'm going to leave this down in the description below. There's a massive long video. It's about an hour and 20 minutes long. I want you guys to go listen to it at least if you guys can. Um, but this is the birth of Bretton Woods 3, a commodity currency revolution. We are seeing this before our eyes. This is this could very well be Bretton Woods 3. This is going to be a big deal. So with all that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because I'm more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. Uh, so it's up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.